Draw the diagram of a microsporangium and label its wall layers. Write briefly about the wall layers. This is 8 marks question. You have to answer like this. To this description, you will get 5 marks. This is introduction part. Actually, just names of the wall layers. So, if you write this part, you will get 1 mark. For epidermis, you will get 1 mark. If you write endothelium, you will get 1 mark. If you write about middle layers, you will get 1 mark. If you write about the tapeta, you will get 1 mark. So, in this way, 5 marks you will get if you write the description to this question. To this diagram, you have 3 marks. If you draw the young anther PS, you will get 1 mark. If you draw the enlarged view of 1 microsporangium showing wall layers, you will get 2 marks. So, in this way, to the description, you will get 5 marks. To the diagrammatic representation, you will get 3 marks. So, just by drawing these diagrams and uh, writing the description easily, simply, you can get 8 marks. So, now I will explain the answer. While explaining, I will take so many diagrams. No need to draw all the diagrams in the examination. This is the general angiospermic flower structure. In this flower, you can see small stalk-like structure that is called pedicel. And the pedicel broad structure is present called thalamus. Usually, on the thalamus, floral parts are arranged sepals, petals, stamens and pistil. The stem we can call it as male sex organ. Pistil we can call it as female sex organ. This is a stamen. On the stamen, small stalk-like structure is present. Somewhat lengthy, that is called filament. Above the filament, somewhat bulging structure is there, that is anther. So, when we cut this anther, when we take transfer section of this anther, the view is right. So, inside the anther, four pollen sacs are present. So, each pollen sac you can call it as microsporangium. So, here our topic is about the microsporangium wall layers. So, inside the pollen sac, pollen grains usually produce. So, these are the pollen grains. Now, this pollen sac, microsporangium, usually surrounded and protected by four wall layers. So, here, what are the wall layers? I will explain you. So, by enlarging this diagram. This is the diagrammatic representation of young anther transfer section. Here, this is the connective. Connective means wherever the anther attaches to the filament, that particular region, you can call it as connective and uh, four pollen sacs are present. Each pollen sac you can call it as microsporangium. Somewhat thin blue colored encircled one is enlarged view of microsporangium. So here in the middle you can see white colored part that is filled with one kind of tissue that is called microsporogenous tissue. Usually this microsporogenous tissue produce pollen grain. Around this microsporogenous tissue how many layers are present? Four wall layers are present from outer to inner. The first one, the outer wall layer is epidermis. The epidermis is somewhat thick red colored one. Below the epidermis, blue thick colored one that is endothelium. This is second wall layer. Below the endothelium, the white colored part, this region, you can call it as middle layer. That is third one. And uh, the middle one, sporogenous tissue is also surrounded by somewhat uh, red and blue combination. The thick layer that is called tapetum. This is four. So one by one, I will explain. So this is the enlarged view of one microsporangium. Now epidermis. So epidermis, uh, it is single wall layer. So number of cells are arranged side by side. Means one cell in thickness. All the cells are somewhat same up to here. But here the epidermal cells are somewhat larger in size and made up of thin cell wall. And at the same time the stromium cells easily they can lose water at the time of anther dehiscence. Anther dehiscence means breaking of anther. Whenever inside the anther pollen grains are completely developed. Usually, anther dehiscence, anther break and liberate pollen grain. When you touch any flower, usually to your finger, somewhat powder-like structure usually stick up. That powder-like structure is nothing but pollen grains. So, these pollen grains are produced inside the anther. So, at the time of dehiscence, at the time of breaking of anther, usually the stromium helps. And one more thing about the stromium. The stromium, where it is present exactly between two pollen sacs. So, this is epidermis. So, this region is stromium. So, when we discuss about this pollen sac, stromium cells are present in this region. So, here stromium cells are present. Here. So, here also stromium cells are present exactly between two pollen sacs. The remaining epidermal cells are normal in But stromium cells are somewhat larger and made up of thin cell walls and usually they can lose water at the time of pollen breaking. And below the epidermis, 
endothelium cells are present. Here, these are the endothelium cells. This is also one layer in thickness. Here, while drawing the diagram endothelium, see the clear structure. So, this is the epidermis. Okay. These are the somewhat larger in size called stomium. And below the epidermis, the endothelium cells we have to draw like this. They are radially somewhat uh, enlarged like this. Radially means towards inside, you have to enlarge these cells like this. And uh, on each cell, you can see some lines. These are called fibrous thickness. Means the cell wall is uh, thick, somewhat extra. So, these extra cell wall thickenings, you can call it as fibrous thickenings. Usually, fibrous thickenings are present only on endotitium. On any cell, you could not see these cell wall thickenings. That is a special characteristic feature of endotitium. Endotitium cells also easily they can lose water at the time of anthelitis. So, endotitium and stomium, these two cells help in the dehiscence of anther and liberate pollen grains. Below the endotitium, middle wall layers are present. Middle wall layers usually uh, how many rows? Uh, minimum 1 to maximum 5 rows. The diagram how many rows I have drawn? 1, 2, 3, 4. There is no any special role about these middle layers. Just write the point. And uh, now come to the tapetum. So, tapetum where it is present? Uh, usually present around the microsporogenous tissue. Here, around the microsporogenous tissue, tapetum cells are present. Each cell is larger in size and inside the tapetum cell, more and dense cytoplasm is present and each cell has more than one nucleus. Usually in each cell one nucleus is present but in tapetum cell more than one nucleus is present. So here in each cell that is why I kept two dots. Means each dot represents one nucleus. And at the same time what is the main role of tapetum? So here this is a microsporogenous tissue. In this tissue so many cells are present. Each cell you can call it as microspore mother cell. This microspore mother cell undergo meiosis. That is nothing but reduction division. So in the reduction division what happens? One cell can produce four cells. So what are these four cells? Pollen grains. Pollen grains are you can call it as microspore. In this way microsporogenous tissue produce microspores are pollen grains. So whenever the microspores are pollen grains formed then they have to grow. They have to develop. So for their development which parts supply nutrients? Tapetum usually supply nutrients to the development of uh, pollen grains. So after completing the development of uh, pollen grains what happens? Tapetum reduced completely. So tapetum is present only in the transverse section of young anther. In mature anther. Mature anther means already pollen grains are completely developed. When you take transverse section of mature anther you could not see the tapetum. Only three wall layers are present. Epidermis, endotitium and middle wall layers. So tapetum is not present because tapetum reduced. Why it is reduced? Because by supplying the nutrients to the development of the pollen grains tapetum is completely reduced in the mature anther. In what way stromium and endotitium help in the dehiscence of anther. Usually stromium is present exactly between two pollen sacs. Below the stromium, endotitium is present. At the time of uh, dehiscence, means uh, whenever they are uh, ready to release at the time, the stromium and endotitium cells lost water. Whenever the stromium and the endotitium cells lost water, what happens? Each microsporangium contracted. For example, this is one microsporangium, here stromium cells are present. This is another microsporangium, here stromium cells are present. So what happens when the stromium cells and endotitium cells lost water? So immediately each microsporangium contract like this contract. Automatically one kind of slip formation takes place between two microsporangium. So at that time, whenever the slip formation takes place like this, pollen grains development is completed. The tissue which is present between two pollen sacs also, this tissue is reduced. The two pollen sacs mingled together and all the pollen grains which are present, which are related to two pollen sacs liberated outside through the slate. So in this way by writing these points, you can get five marks easily and drawing these two diagrams, you can get easily three marks. So if you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.